avidin, raw eggs and biotin. So uh, this uh, article, well, this post is from a website called robertbarrington.net. This is an older blog post from 2015, but he's referencing the science here. And I think it's uh, important to understand and an important sort of baseline to receive for this information about avidin and biotin and the possibility of biotin deficiency. So something that I don't think we need to fear as much as some people uh, want you to or are concerned about if you're on a carnivore diet or at least an animal-based animal -based nutrient dense diet, okay? So, so the fact that eggs contain a good supply of biotin is interesting because raw egg white may be a potent inhibitor of biotin absorption. That's due to the avidin, right? Initial observations about the interactions of raw egg whites and dietary effects were made when it was observed that the laboratory animals on healthy diets did not do well if raw egg white was added to their diets. In particular, experiments showed that animals lost some of their hair, developed dermatitis, particularly around the eyes. It's also observed the addition of high amounts of B vitamins to the diets reversed these symptoms, right? And by carefully changing the B vitamin administered, it was found that biotin was the vitamin responsible for this effect. Uh, further tests showed that dermatitis and skin lesions in the, in the animals occurred when they were fed a raw egg white diet that was about 50% of their total diet. So 50% of the diet in these animals was egg whites. And at that point, they developed problems. At that point, they showed signs of biotin deficiency. Now, what happens is that avidin binds to biotin. I know that avidin binds to, you know, like say you have one avidin molecule, it might bind to like four or five biotin molecules. I think that's the rough number. Once that avidin molecule is fully bound to bound up with biotin, it can't in inhibit any more biotin. And so there's a finite amount of avidin in the, in the raw egg white. There's a finite amount of biotin in an egg as well. Okay, so when you consume the egg, if you consume it raw, you might be inhibiting the absorption of the biotin. Follow up on this, there were observations of eczema in children eating raw eggs as far back as 1939. In 1942, human studies were performed where humans were fed 30% of their intake as raw eggs. In that case, only a handful of subjects were able to complete the study. They did develop dermatitis, uh, gray pallor to the skin, so kind of a gray skin skin color, their skin was also dry and scaly. They had other symptoms including depression, sleepiness, muscle pain, numbness, um, appetite suppression. So again, like all sorts of issues, right? But at the end of the day, these were people who were consuming 30% of their diet, 30% of their total calories in the form of raw eggs. And so since that raw eggs made such a significant portion of their diet, who knows what the rest of their diet was, that's not listed here. Obviously the rest of their diet was not high enough in biotin to make up for the avidin consumption that was inhibiting the biotin in the eggs. So let's go, let's go a little further on this, right? So. Remember, once all the avidin is bound up, excess biotin is still absorbed. Uh, it's important to note that biotin deficiency was, was only noted in the rats that ate 50% of their diet as raw eggs, and biotin deficiency was observed in children, but those children were eating up to 30% of their calories as eggs. So neither the rats nor the children were eating, obviously, a carnivore-style diet which would be rich in other sources of biotin. What are other sources of biotin? Well, luckily it, they're common in animal food. So let's take a look at that right now. So some other biotin rich foods include dairy in form of milk or cheese, um, yogurt, salmon, chicken, 
liver, beef, lamb, and even tuna. So you can see there's a fair amount of foods on there that one might consume and probably in significant quantities and that should be enough to as long as you're eating you know 60 well 70 percent or more of your diet your calories are coming from these other foods and not in the form of raw eggs you should be fine that's really what it boils down to i don't see this as an issue especially since in these studies the real issue again was at the end of the day you know uh, some eczema and some hair loss dermatitis things like that right it was basically you know there was some skin irritation there was some hair loss those things okay this is not going to be life-threatening i mean if you tried to push it then obviously you could have some long-term issues with it um, I think if you were really concerned about consuming raw eggs, then all you need to do is cook the egg white. All right, and if you still wanted to have the yolk raw because you were trying to preserve some of the nutrients and you think you're going to get a whole lot more nutrients through a raw yolk versus a cooked yolk, you know, there's going to be debate on that on both sides, and both sides are going to have some good arguments for and against. At the end of the day, I, I don't think it's a huge game changer for most people eating raw versus whole. If just doing it out of convenience because you want to, say, blend a raw egg up into your coffee, well, guess what? When you put a raw egg in coffee to have as your breakfast, blend it up, the first thing you're doing, if it's hot coffee at about 150 degrees, is you're cooking some of that egg white. And since the egg white is getting cooked, then that abidin is being cooked. So when that protein is exposed to heat, it's neutralizing that abidin. So now the abidin is not going to be able to bind to as much biotin. So it's unlikely that having one raw egg in a coffee or even doing that twice a day is going to be 30% of your calories. If it is, you're not eating enough, right? So it's not a big issue. Like I said, for a month, basically, I ate probably pretty close to, I don't know, maybe 20% even of my diet, of my calories a day was coming from eggs, right? Uh, maybe even more. Maybe it was as high as 30%. I was eating a lot of eggs and maybe, uh, I think it was consuming about 3,000 calories a day when I was eating this steak and egg diet. And at the height of it, you know, again, I don't, something I only did for a month, so it wasn't long term, but at the height of it, it's possible I could have been getting up to 30% of my diet in the form of raw eggs. But the rest of my diet was also rich in biotin. I was consuming uh, steak. I was consuming beef. I was consuming some liver. I was also supplementing with uh, some liver pills and some other organ pills just to make sure I didn't end up with any sort of weird um, nutrient deficiencies because so much of my diet at that time was coming from just two sources, which was egg and beef. So something to keep in mind, wouldn't worry about abidin and biotin deficiency unless you're really just consuming a whole lot of your, your diet as raw eggs and you're not also consuming, uh, aside from that, an animal-based nutrient-dense diet. Uh, I think that's really all I have on this topic for today. So if you have any other questions, um, feel free to put them in the comments below and we'll see you on the next video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. It really helps. Have a good day. So if you enjoyed today's information, I provide information just like this to my clients to help improve energy, burn fat, and build muscle through an ancestral lifestyle and diet. My program doesn't involve gimmicks like bars and shakes, counting points, 
tracking macros, or even spending hours and hours doing cardio in the gym. Now, I've not only used this program to help clients uh, improve well-being and health, but I also used it as a part of my own personal transformation. So if you're looking for an easy, intuitive way of eating and simple lifestyle adjustments to improve your well-being, then click on the link in the description below to book your free no-obligation discovery call today.